I do know that this week is a huge week. Mm -hmm. um, the the the, uh, the revaluation, the global financial reset, the quantum financial system, were all all were passed through the World Court in the Hague last Wednesday. Right, it's all been rubber stamped now, so there's no going back. Not that there was anyway, but uh, that's now been dealt with. So we will have the transitioning this week. Uh, and then the price of oil spiked, is it not after the shipwreck? Because so many container ships now have to go the whole way around the southern tip of Africa as an alternate route, right? So the efforts that they're making to free the ship, is it free already? I haven't even heard anything today. I haven't. They, they say that they've, they've turned it around. Okay. Um, so it's long ways, but it's still grounded. Um, it's interesting, Charlie, because the mainstream narrative of the story is that there's been a windstorm that caused yeah. the ship to lose control and get beached somehow, which is pretty unprecedented if you think about it. I mean, considering that a lot of people have actually said that it would take a hurricane force wind to affect a ship of that size. And another uh, interesting thing to know was that the route that, I mean, I think most people know this by now, but the route that the ship took during the windstorm was it just somehow drew a perfect picture of male Yes. It's so strange. And I've heard that the Russian Navy was also positioned on one side and the um and the US canal of the, the canal other. and the US Navy was positioned on the other side, wasn't it? Yeah. So it's possible that this whole situation was a stink. It was, it's just how would a wind blown ship that is one of the biggest in the world draw a picture that clearly you know, it was quite suggestive. And one theory I heard about this was that the um, ship's navigation system was actually white hats. That, Is there any truth that's to that? more to the truth. That's getting very close to the truth. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's, there's there's a lot of things there um, that we will have to wait and see unfold. But the mainstream media are not telling us the truth. Um, I'm having to do my own deep research there with Egyptian connections uh, to find out exactly what's going on rather than what we're hearing because there's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, messages going out there that are just completely inaccurate um, but uh, I can yeah. imagine people like just really want to make sense of it so there's loads of theories going around right now when when ships go through the Suez Canal they go through on autopilot they're mm. controlled from the skies because it is such a narrow piece of water right and it's a very busy stretch of water so the management of it is very important so what actually happened not uh, not only is unprecedented but is actually physically impossible, impossible. um mm -hmm. so something has been done on purpose by by somebody um and of course, it was it was convenient that it was evergreen. The media, of course, pumped out rapidly that it was a Taiwanese ship made in Taiwan. Yes, it was. It's, it's absolutely correct. It was made in Taiwan. It was a Taiwan. It's under a Taiwanese flag, but of course, it is actually owned by Evergreen. Has, has been very well documented on this, and for anybody who's done any research at all, they'll find it out. And so, something is going on. I'm just trying to find out exactly what, because the stories that are coming out are nothing like the truth. And it's very interesting that the Egyptian prime minister um, uh, authorised the, the, the uh, taking off of the, the containers onto dry land to refloat the ship. So, Are they going to do that? That's quite, that would be quite telling, wouldn't it? That would be very, very telling. And that's a very unique thing because mm -hmm. the, the, all of those containers are currently in transit. So they, you know, they, 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 they would have to to um, fence off that area um, because it's you're, you're unloading and lo unloading and reloading on, on foreign soil. Um, and it'd be very interesting if they accidentally dropped one and uh, it came open. Um, and uh, yeah, let's wait and see. Uh, the call code for the vessel is obviously H3RC, which is so close to the initials for important thing I think was that the word evergreen like you said the word that is now being pa it's painted in bold letters across the ship and I think what's happening is it's sinking into the consciousness of millions of people right now who are watching this story and like Q kept saying the world is watching right and it yeah. just just so happens to be 
And then the, I heard that the call signs for the tugboats that are trying to free um, free the vessel are called what Baraka and Masayed, Masayed or something. So, so I think so. that's that's right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it, it, it's, it's all in plain sight. Exactly, and I, it's not. I mean, it's not. Um, it wouldn't be. It's safe to assume that all these names have been chosen as comms for the world to understand uh, a possibly deeper narrative of what's really going on, and that you know. That picture was actually abs absolutely astounding, Charlie. Well, how did they do that? It was so expertly done, mm -hmm. the picture that they draw, whatever they're trying to communicate. And it's just a matter of time before the cargo aboard, like you said, of these trap vessels are inspected and yeah. possibly made public. We're not sure, right? We're not sure if any of the information is going to be made public. We'll have to wait and see. This week is a very, very important week um, mm -hmm. because the the official documentation was signed off in the hague at the world court oh. for the revaluation the reset and the quantum financial system so that's all been signed off to happen before the first of uh, first of april so they've been told to push ahead okay. and uh, to do that okay okay so right now we're just i mean what he's to, what he's been visually been seen to be to have done in the first four to eight weeks, I mean, it is, is nothing more than idiot, idiot mentality. I mean, it's it, you couldn't make it up. He can't even hold a press conference together. Um, they're taking the piss now. Um, Did you say that James Woods was the one playing by that somewhere? James Woods is playing by mask, yes. So he's being a little bit naughty at times. So. He's having a lot of fun. He's having a lot of fun. He's having a lot of fun. <laughs> Um, but um, it's, it is, it's it's funny to watch. Um, and then you just like, you know, you... I'm so quiet now, like, where are they? Why aren't you talking anymore? Why aren't you telling well, us? Why you I, think they're, I think they're grossly embarrassed now. Yeah, definitely. Um, um, lastly, uh, Charlie, yeah. I just want your opinion. I'm not saying this is... Um, uh, it's just your opinion. I just want your opinion on this. Are we still hoping that Trump within this year because Kwanis haven't said that something around April and I don't want to get too attached to any sort of timeline but could you give me your opinion on that whether you think that is the case the answer to your question is yes okay <laughs> just needed some reassurance thank you <laughs> um, um, and he never stood down he never yeah. stood down and at the moment in America the military are in control um and just just one little point of interest for you um they recognized commander-in-chief earlier this month oh yeah <laughs> so it must be a lot of um this is just disinformation isn't it then that that we're hearing that there's a lot of um this um People are actually, there's a lot of division within the military. Is that disinformation? Because I was hoping it was. Oh, rubbish. The, mili the military, you, anybody who understands anything about the military, any, anybody, is just they don't commit to the president. They commit to protect the people mm -hmm. and uphold the constitution. End of story. That's what they join the military. They don't join the military to be... JFK supporters, that is to protect the constitution and the people. End of story. So there's no division. They, they want to protect the people and uphold the constitution. Simple. That's amazing. So we'll just end it there then. That's such a good note to end it on. I'm um, just, it always reassures me when I talk to you, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you too. Great to see you again. You too.